What up, Long Beach? Welcome back to the562.org. It's Tyler. And Mike, and this video is brought to you by Naples Rib Company. And all of the 562's cross-country coverage this year is sponsored by Bryson Financial. Hill yeah, Mike. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> We're out at Signal Hill for some more league cross-country, the second meet of the season here at Discovery Well Park. A beautiful day to run. Yeah, it's picturesque uh, to watch, but grueling to run. Uh, perfect weather, though. Nice to see that. This is Polly's home course. They do practice here every week. So uh, we're expecting to see a good performance. They had the team sweep last week at Eldo, and they're looking to keep that strength in numbers. Up the hill they come as we get this thing started. Milliken's Jason Parra bunched up in the middle there, but not for long. He would take his trademark lead as the Milliken sophomore jumps out and the, on the first loop around the hill, followed by four green jerseys, Cameron Roan, Luke Larson, Robert Guerrero, and Mason Lindsay from Poly. And those are the two results that we were almost certain we were going to see. You do see Wilson's Gus Hollister, Milliken's Dylan Ball, and Eric Placentia, and then Polly's Brandon Perry. On the second loop, Para passing Tyler's buddy Derek back there. It's my guy Derek back yeah. there. He just walked right and went right by him. Uh, he's maintaining his lead over the chase pack. Uh, Polly, though, kind of separating out Guerrero, uh, making some space there in second. Then Larson in third, going to be followed by Lindsay and Roan. As you can see, Polly dominating the leaderboard, even though Milliken has the lead with with Para. Well, and the Rams were moving up, Placentia and Ball, followed by Perry for Polly and Hollister for Wilson. But again, Para in front with Polly on top of the team standings is what we inspect, expected. No surprise for Para to win it. The sophomore is just so solid and so historic. 16.03 is his time. That's the fastest time this century. Guerrero not too far behind with a 16.20 leading that pack of Jackrabbits. Cool hand Luke Larson takes third with 16.34. Four straight Polly runners after Para in that top five. Roan fourth, 16.47. Lindsay in fifth, 16.53. Then we get Placentia in 6th with a 17.05 and Ball 7th with a 17.09 and Perry rounding out the Jackrabbit scores in 8th with a 17.11. Yeah, those guys definitely bunched together. Hollister for Wilson in 9th at 17.20. And then an exciting finish for 10th is Eric Brannon going to catch Milliken's Michael Brief at the final corner. And Brannon, he knows something about corners, Mike. Great run from him <laughs> to close strong. Now we go to the girls' race. Uh, the Chameleonaire, Camille Lindsay, leading Polly to a victory two weeks ago at El Dorado. The Jackrabbits looking strong in the league this year, trying to win their first league title in four years. And as we would expect, Lindsay immediately out to the front. She's trying to go wire to wire in this one as she's accustomed to doing. Yeah, she's got breathing room coming down the hill for the first time, and she knows this course super well. We mentioned that the Jackrabbits practice here. She won here as a freshman, so she's in her domain for sure as we pan back to catch up with the rest of the field. Lindsay's such a special runner. We're used to kind of seeing her get out to these big leads. Teammate Alexa Bryson comes around the curve as you see her in second place, and she's had a really strong start to the year for the Jackrabbits. Well, she was their fifth runner sometimes last year. She's moved up to be their second, and in this one, the second in the league. She's got company, though. Wilson's Natalie Maz close behind. A good battle between these two in this race. And then we see Milliken's Celeste Ramirez leading a pack of runners, including Polly's Miley Quinn, Lakewood's Delilah Chavez, Polly's Mia McKiernan, and Evelyn Hernandez Lujan, Wilson's Natalie Seymour, and Bailey Carpenter from Lakewood. And after Mike finishes reading the phone book, we go back to <laughs> the, the, finishing the second loop. Lindsay just needing to stay upright and maintain her lead. The Camilitary, well stationed throughout the course to cheer her on. But there's a change in the rearview mirror. Maz has now overtaken Bryson for second. We mentioned those two had a really nice back and forth battle in this race. Still a lot of poly pink though. Quinn and Hernandez Lujan with Milliken's Ramirez right in the middle. McKiernan also checking in as you'll see her pop down as she's looking for top seven finish. Back to the front with Camille Lindsay, who is literally beating spectators down the, the hill to the finish line. Not me, though. She, <laughs> she she breaks the course record by 20 seconds with a time of 18.42. She's the first Morley girl to go sub-19 at Signal Hill. Definitely a special season continuing to roll out for the junior, but it's also been a special season for the team. Alexa Bryson wins that battle for second place. 20.26 is her time as Polly goes 1-2. Then it's Maz for Wilson, again leading the way for the Bruins in this one, 2042. Polly's Miley Quinn in fourth, 2120. Much better showing for her this week as she's recovering from that injury. And we've got some racing for fifth here, Mike. Lakewood's Bailey Carpenter going to trade some paint as she passes two Jackrabbits. She would take fifth for the Lancers, 2131. 
Evelyn Hernandez Lujan in sixth, and then McKiernan in seventh, right behind for the Jackrabbits. They named the Carpenter Center after Bailey. Wow. That move was so good. Uh, Alexa Hernandez Lujan next for Polly, then Milliken Celeste Ramirez takes ninth, and it's going to be Lakewood's Delilah Chavez rounding out the top 10 finishers in the girls varsity race. Jackrabbits though, a six of the top eight, another impressive day for Lindsay and the Jackrabbits in the driver's seat for both more league titles. League finals are November 3rd at Hartwell. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors, including Ocean Law Center. You'd better believe we're going to be there on November 3rd for what looks like it's going to be an exciting and potentially historic day for the Morley Cross Country Finals.